Greetings, Alpha Citizens. This is Craig Allen with today's top stories on Alpha City News. Rainbows and Pride Parade in Floptown. Mushroom Man swears to rebuild. Trio of twits try to rain on parade. Blue Bear honored for his heroism. Heavyweight smacks Lord Perfect. Presto tames the hidden house and more. From your home to City Hall, from your neighborhood to the White House, from your city to the world and beyond, this is Alpha City News with Craig Allen. It was a colorful day in Alpha City this past Saturday as the annual Alternate Sexuality Pride Parade took place on Absinthe Avenue in Floptown. From the mustering point just north of the yards to Ringgod Square Park, the traditional end-slash-party spot, Floptown was covered in rainbows for the day. Even the areas set apart for protesters in a display of sadly unreturned open-mindedness had a feeling of festivity, if only from the mass of rose petals each passing float rained down on that section. This year's Grand Marshal, Captain Sarah Mathers, who also heads the ACPD Gay and Lesbian Officers Association, was joined by her fire department equivalent, Special Operations Battalion Chief Dennis Armand, as well as representatives of LGBT organizations of both city and state governments, mayoral hopeful Richard Tricky Dick Noxon, and heroes Madame Man, Rock Hardman, the hero, not the adult film star, The Bright Man, Beautiful Smiles, Strange Attractor and the Free Radical, and The Rainbow Corps. Semi-automatic sorcerer and Mando Church were also in attendance. The party at Ringgod Square Park was catered by former villain John Maldif and a host of other Restaurant Row notables with free food for all. A letter of support from Captain Stupendous was read as well, wherein he apologized for not being able to attend in person due to assisting with the guard on the temporary prison for the recently captured Gatan invasion troops. A mighty cheer was roused from his ending line, though, Don't worry, next year we'll do it again, and even better. Indeed we will, Captain. Indeed we will. Intrepid ACN reporter Lindy Johnston managed to get a moment of John, Mushroom Man, Maldives' time at the Ringgod Square Park party, where she confirmed that Maldif and his partner, restaurateur Barker Clowey, were indeed planning to rebuild their mushroom-centric eatery, Basidion, lost to fire last month, as soon as possible. When asked about his thoughts about his old partner, the subterranean, being responsible for the fire, Maldif simply waved a hand towards the happy throngs that filled the park, saying that this day was about celebrating happiness and not dwelling on sadness. He then insisted that Lindy try his new stuffed mushrooms. Lindy confirmed they were delicious. It wasn't all quiet along the parade route, though, as Pure Simon, the Witchfinder General, and the Masculinist, along with his sidekick-slash-arm-candy Living Doll, each attempted to put a crimp in the festivities. Pure Simon, making some sort of statement about purity, apparently, tried to douse a section of the parade route in red ink, but found his plan stopped with rather embarrassing ease by Jackie Quick. Pure's Vincent Price-like cries of, You're all freaks! faded quickly as police carted him off to jail. The Witchfinder General attempted to take the main float hostage in order to get Presto the Witch to face him, but quick work by Parade Marshal Captain Sarah Mathers and the cross-dressing Madame Man saw the head of the non-existent army trussed up with his own whip and muzzled with his own embroidered neck collar. The masculinist, meanwhile, was arrested for various breaches of the peace as he shouted imprecations onto the heads of the crowd at Ringgod Park, accusing them of, and I quote, devaluing the worth of real men and trying to create an anti-masculine world. Yes, he really said that. 
as his sidekick, Living Doll isn't a person, but a non-sentient automaton cast in the mold of a 15-year-old's fantasy of a woman. It was not arrested, and was last seen on the Miss Alpha City float, dancing with transgender contestant Anna Pearl. On a happier note, James the Blue Bear Neater was honored by the city for his part in stopping a young homeless man from leaping off McKay Bridge last month. Neater made a short speech calling for the city to do more to help the indigent and those suffering from mental illness, which drew enthusiastic applause from the crowd. Pictures of Neater's mother beaming as the hero of the day got a hug from Martha Graham, the senior citizen whom the Blue Bear was almost arrested for assaulting a few months ago, made the front page of the Alpha City Citizen. Hero watchers will have noticed that we have seen more of the Empyrean in the Alpha City skies over the last week, as the cosmic hero helps to cover for Captain Stupendous, with whom he shares duties guarding the Catan invasion prisoners on alternate days. It's been a quiet time for high-powered supercrime, as the presence of both the Captain and Empyrean in close proximity to the city gives pause to even the most arrogant evildoers' schemes. In related news, despite the best efforts of the healer and Dr. Escalapius, Radiant remains in the coma she fell into as a result of her exposing the Gatan shapeshifters to the world. It's hoped that when the Jewel Star League ship arrives to take charge of the Gatan, their medicine might be able to assist. All of us here at ACN, and all of us in the city, hope that something to help with Radiant's recovery will be discovered soon. Heavyweight went head-to-head -head in a short but decisive battle with Lord Perfect earlier in the week, when Perfect attacked a fundraiser for research in preventing leukemia. As usual, the self-proclaimed pinnacle of superiority eschewed any actual robbery in favor of holding the crowd hostage so that he could expound to the captive audience on his disdain for anything which allowed the imperfect to survive. So enraptured with the sound of his own voice was Lord Perfect that he failed to notice that his hand-picked Guard of Excellence was being subdued one by one, until the hero heavyweight literally landed on the blowhard's head with both feet. Perfect attempted to continue his spiel while dealing with the obese hero, but his less-than-perfect mastery of hand-to-hand -hand combat saw him beaten quickly and without mercy. Heavyweight, having won the day, was toasted by the crowd as Lord Perfect attempted to chew through the gag that had been placed in his mouth. The gag was not removed when police removed Perfect. There has been worry in some quarters about the continued absence of Presto the Witch, since the eldritch Hidden House vanished while the heroine was inside it a few weeks ago. Except for one short sighting of Presto, where the Mistress of Magic was seen fighting and winning against considerable odds, neither she nor the storied building she was in had been seen. This changed on Thursday, however, when police began receiving reports from the Yards section of Floptown that the field known as the Bloody Red Acre, site of, at various times in the city's history, the Karcher Murder House, St. Bedlam Asylum, the city's largest slaughterhouse, as well as the terrifying Unholy Factory, but which had been barren for almost 50 years, was suddenly covered in an ancient, tree-choked cemetery with a huge Gothic mansion in its center. Upon arriving at the scene, ACPD's Paranormal Response Squad, led by Lieutenant Janine Black Rune Kimball, was met by Presto herself, and assured that she and the Hidden House had reached an agreement. And while the house and graveyard are undeniably creepy, they mean no harm. As the Bloody Red Acre is land owned by the city, the city council will have to sign off on the Hidden House remaining where it is, 
Although, should the city decide the house must move, I don't imagine any of the city councilors will be present to inform it of that decision. A band of the Emperor of America's Minutemen were caught trying to steal technology from Eisner University's Department of Paraphysics late Tuesday night. The Emperor, real name Rutherford Jefferson Harding, is the ruler of a nearby perpendicular dimension, in which America managed to not only win the revolution, but go on to take over all of the British Empire's territory, and eventually the whole of the world except, for some reason, the islands of Tonga and Samoa. Listeners most likely remember the Emperor as being responsible for the takeover of the town of New Rome several years ago, as his troops, the so-called Minutemen, tried to establish a beachhead in the town, so the Holy American Universal Empire could extend their borders into our world. Anders Breitman, the Bright Man, was instrumental in ending that threat, devising a means to short-circuit the machines needed to allow the soldiers to remain in our dimension. Both the Bright Man and the Conundrum Corporation were on site at the university and managed to keep any secret technology from being stolen. But the Bright Man did report that the Minutemen he fought did not appear to be wearing the armbands they had previously used to stabilize their presence in our world meaning that the Emperor might have advanced the cross-dimensional science beyond the need for such devices, removing their greatest obstacle to mounting another invasion. Any Alpha citizen who catches sight of a possible Minuteman is requested to inform authorities immediately, and then email us at alphacitynews at gmail.com. Rush Hour travelers on the West Side Green Line will be pleased to learn that negotiations with the newly sentient Skycars have yielded a promising compromise. The Skycars, infected by Mechanicus with a virus which improves their intellect into the self-aware range, have been settling the question of their future as thinking beings. A panel composed of representatives from the Alpha City Department of Transportation, the faculty of Eisner University's Department of Non-Human Intelligence, the Mayor's Office, and a League of Nations Sentient Rights Oversight Officer have been discussing the possibilities open to the new machine-based Alpha Citizens for several weeks, and it seems they have come to an agreement all sides can accept. Sources say at least three of the intelligences have agreed to be transferred out of their Skycar bodies and to join the Machine Intelligence Studies Unit at the University. One refuses to continue to work as a Skycar, but has agreed to be moved wholesale to a position in the Museum of Transportation as a tour guide and information source. The remaining cars have agreed to continue on as before, although each will be allowed internet access names of their own choice independent of Department of Transportation IT numbers, which will be reflected on their individual carriages, customization of individual carriages to reflect the personalities of the individual cars, and the ability to interact with the riders they carry. All sides are reported to be quite happy, and are pleased they could avert most of the chaos Mechanicus was sure to have wanted. In spite of the loss of four of the cars, the Green Line promises to be up and running even more efficiently than normal quite soon. And now, this week's Super Combat Scorecard. The pay-per-view fight between the Alpha City Troll and the Los Angeles Troll for rights to the Troll name has been postponed yet again, as the Los Angeles Troll apparently has a hangnail. Boy photographer Johnny Munson assisted Izar and Exegesis of the Neo Deities in fighting off a horde of deadling knights attacking the Neo Deity city of Amazingville. Photographs will be published in the coming Sunday Citizen. The Legion of Odd and Edwin Sherdlu crossed into the world of Talon to help balance the Valence of Fire, which threatened both of our worlds. The Bowery Legion had a dust-up with Headmistress Payne's School for Scoundrels. Larch Cosmic Groove, the Space Hippie, helped the Looking Glass Man return from the dimension of bad vibes. 
Mr. Zero, busted up an operation by the machinist's henchmen to break into the city's security network. Jackie Quick disassembled the big wind-up before he could break Dr. Metronome out of prison. Flying Shark faced off against Ibblestar and the Unhinged with an assist from the Red Warlock. Interdimensional gamblers Andros and X attempted to steal Calamity Cube's Chaos Dice from the ACPD Super Weapon Impound Monday, only to run afoul of the Empyrean. And that's all for this week, Alpha Citizens. This has been Alpha City News with Craig Allen. Alpha City News is produced by Carter Lee. Sound beds are provided by newsbeds.com. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions, please share them with us at alphacitynews at gmail.com. You can download us on iTunes, at Stitcher, at Libsyn, or on SoundCloud, and find us at wordpress.com under Alpha City News. We thank you for listening, and we hope you have a super day, Alpha Citizen.